Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're joining us from. Uh, thanks for uh, coming into another episode of the Abop Freak Show. This is episode number two, and we're going to switch back to Abop topics this week. Uh, this came right from our suggestions. We've got uh, a hotly debated topic um, of at least uh, we'll we'll talk about Hungarian notation. Do you use it? Do you not use it? Um, I'm joined by my colleague Rich Heilman, who's going to take the stance that Hungarian notation is a good thing, and I will be playing the part of the unbeliever. Um, <laughs> Uh, and uh, we'll look at some examples. We'll we'll have a like we said, hopefully a lively debate. I encourage those of you in the chat to uh, to join in. That's part of the fun of being able to do a live stream. Is is uh, you guys can participate as well. And uh, yeah, I also have prepared some content on um, field symbols versus references as well, because uh, I'm going to decimate. Rich's uh, argument here so quickly that we need some other comment, uh, some oh, other content, okay. right? All right. <laughs> it's already getting nasty in here, isn't it? Yeah. Why well, you, you throwing you pulling off the gloves already? <laughs> All right. So let's uh, let's go ahead and jump in here. I I prepared a little example, and maybe some of you. Your window went away, didn't it, Rich? Teams window thing on top of the code. This is going to be a problem, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. I can't tell what you're seeing. I know you can't. Ah. Getting everything nicely sized up so the video... Oh, what the heck? Is that... <laughs> Should I just go off video? Ah. <laughs> uh, one second here. There we are. Yeah, we'll just uh, we just won't always be showing our our video here. And to be fair, I will uh, I'll go away with my video. But but you guys can still hear us even when our video isn't on here. Uh, we'll keep an eye on the chat. Uh, we'll come back on when that uh, gets really hotly debated. Um, but maybe just uh, just a short introduction so everybody's aware of what Hungarian notation is. Uh, you know. Uh, I think it's it's a term that uh, maybe not everybody's familiar with the term Hungarian notation, but I think um, everybody's probably knows what we're talking about here. It's basically the idea that you're you're preferencing your variables, your parameters, uh, whatever object that you're working with, with you know uh, little encoding of what. It is uh, the data type, the scope, uh, the mutability. I mean, there's like there's like five or six different criteria. I think most common in ABOP, what you see is like scope, um, like LG or local versus global, um, uh, or parameters uh, that get marked as exporting, importing, changing. You, you'll see that on there, and then maybe you see a second character that also uh, gives the, the type, you know, uh, this is a table versus a string versus a structure. But I think that's where, in my mind, um, things start to go wrong already, is there's no common agreement on to what each of these characters mean. Um, I mean, for instance, if this had been if this had been a structure instead of a table, if I had done es underscore flights, would that have mean that this is an exporting structure, or would that have meant that was an exporting string? Um, so it's all dependent upon everybody agreeing as to what these short little uh, abbreviations mean and what order they're in. Um, I think a lot of people probably just learn by looking at like SAP code, um, uh, standard code, and kind of modeling off of them. But, but 
I mean, what what do you think, Rich? Is my explanation of what it is um, a good starting point? I guess I shouldn't have started it in with the uh, with bashing it already, huh? Yeah, I mean, I thought you were going to take the the approach of um, you, you being pro non Hungarian. You're just bashing Hungarian, so <laughs> I have nowhere to start, right? But, but no, I think I agree as far as um, you know what you've what you've put out there as as an explanation, but I also agree with there is not really a standard. Um, if there was a standard, I think it would probably be probably be a little bit. Uh, we probably might not have this conversation if there was a standard. Um, but I think that, and I'm just I'm just throwing that out this out here. I think that even if there isn't a standard, you know, I think it is easier to read than not having it so for example you use the you use the example of um is it e- es flights is it a structure or is it a string well that's that's a that's 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 a good argument but when it comes down to it i think that having something there is better than not having anything at all um depending i mean i think that you could probably and you're going to make this argument later. Uh, based on the context, you can probably <laughs> figure out whether or not it's a structure or a string, but at least you have something there that's that's pointing you in one direction or another, whereas if you don't have anything, you have absolutely no idea what it is. So I'm just, I'm just make, making that argument right out of the gate as, since you brought that up. All right, let's come back to that in a minute. So, so okay. first of all, there's some – some people might say namespacing. Some people might say Hungarian notation built into ABOP that's rather unavoidable. Um, for instance, Z or Y. The fact that objects begin or Z or Y when they're in the customer namespace, you could even make a case that's some form of Hungarian notation. But, but look at our classes, ZCL. Classes be- generally begin with ZCL. Interfaces generally begin with IF. And I think the... These parts of the naming standard of, of global objects, um, I mean, part of that, like, like we said, is, is namespacing. It, it, uh, it does separate out the customer namespace um, as opposed to the, the SAP namespace is an important concept of the development environment. That's, that's unavoidable and, and a good thing. And I think even some of the global, um, some of the global object naming, like starting with CL for class, IF for interface, um, I would not make a argument against that. And even I think when when you read most of the debate online, this applies mostly to variables and parameters and not the global object naming. So I think we can right. um, I think we can agree that uh, uh, that uh, that's not uh, that's not part of the issue that we're that we're debating here. Good. Um, so then I have you halfway, halfway there. <laughs> halfway. Th- no, I, I would make a case that that's not the scope of what we're discussing. That, oh, uh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm just checking the uh, the comments here real quick. There's there's already some interesting discussion over here. Let's see. But it's uh, uh, flight is always a structure. Flights is a table, and flight number is a field. Uh, flight number should already be illegal due to the length. <laughs> I, I like DJ's comment there. Um, you know. I think length is part of this. I, I, I mean, uh, you know, by prefixing your your variables, if you're already using descriptive name for your variables, then adding more stuff onto the front does that improve readability or does it hurt readability? You're you're making the case that uh, the et underscore actually improves readability over just flights in in this case. Is that true, Rich? Or I so I don't know. I, half of this might be my OCD. I don't know. <laughs> um, but for me, I like to be able to glance at something and know exactly what it is when I when I glance at it. Just glancing at it, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, that's that's what it comes down to. Okay. So, I don't care how long it is or how short it is. If I if I can glance at one one aspect of it and know what it is, that that's helpful for me. All right, so then the, the two main arguments that I would make against Hungarian notation is the one that you've already mentioned, that based upon 
the code, uh, the, the way it's used in the code, I can already tell what type of variable it is. Uh, and, and I've prepared a couple of examples here. I mean, if I'm doing select into table, do I really need something on the front of, of that receiving variable to tell me that that's an internal table? I mean, obviously, it's an internal table based upon the context that it's used in, right? Mm -hmm. So in, in, in this case, these two lines of code here that we're focused in on, does the GIT underscore on the front of this really, Im really tell you anything that you couldn't tell by reading the line anyway? Not in this case. Not in this case. Is there? So, yes. <laughs> All right. Well, so let's say, let's say you wanted to, you wanted to clear the internal table. Yeah. Right. So if you have a, a clear statement somewhere buried somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. And you say clear, GIT flights. You know exactly what you're doing there. Whereas if you're just clearing flights, you have no idea if it's a structure or, or a table. And you're going to have the clear statement in a method with nothing else? Oh, come on. <laughs> no, I'm saying, I mean, there's probably going to be some other code around that clear statement that either before it or after it that's going to give you some context as to what that, that variable is, right? Maybe. Maybe, maybe, but later on, I'll show you an example right. of reality, and, and and maybe it's not so cut and dry. You know? right. And that was just an example off the top of the head. There's other situations where you may not know what it is, um, or you may not know what it, what it is based off the context. Okay. Quickly, quickly. I mean, okay, let's... Let's let's go let's go let's take it further. Like I said earlier, I said I like to know what it is when I glance at it. Uh -huh. Not having to read two or three lines of code around it. I want to glance at the variable and know what it is. Okay. Right. All right. So that's my that's my argument back against that. <laughs> and of course, the other argument would be is that modern IDEs do this for you, right? If I glance over here at the outline, for instance. I can see, well, and because of the way it's displayed, I can see what my uh, what variables I have here, and based upon the icons next to them, I can see that it's a private instance attribute. Or if I okay, some of us can't see that at all. You can't see that at all. You mean even with my glasses on, right up against your screen, I can't see those icons. All right. Well, admittedly, the icons. I have increased the size of the font. Here in the in the window, but but can't go through and change the size of all these for for the live stream. So it's it's not so impossible to read when you are sitting in front of, of the IDE in front of you and, and not over the live stream and stuff like that. But I mean the other part of this would be the ABOP element info. When I when I put my cursor on any of these, it's going to show me the type type standard table of. Uh, it shows me an icon to, to show me, well, that's, a, that's locally defined, but if I get something here that's uh, globally defined, I'm going to see the same icon here, private instance attribute. You know, so it's telling me the scope, it's telling me the type, and of course I can even forward navigate into that, into that type and see more details about it. So the other yeah. argument that I'm making here is that when you really need to know the tooling is 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 going to give you the definitive answer anyway. Yeah, it's and the ABOP guys have done a terrific job in bringing that to ABOP and Eclipse. But is this same same functionality? Is it there in SE thirty eight? Uh, the out well SE thirty eight. Let's at least use SE eighty, okay? No, 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 uh, no because oh, you want to? Who, who's the majority? Who's the majority of our ABOP developers out there? They're probably still using the SE thirty eight. I have to, I have to be the oh, advocate man. for them because SE thirty eight. Those, those guys behind. We can't, S we yeah. can't, we can't even agree SC, on SE eighty. Maybe, but come on. I mean, the reality is, is you know. We still have we still have people using the the old tooling, yeah. which may or may not have 
the types of thing. And what we're what we're talking about here is code. We're not talking yeah. about tooling, right? And, and, and there's so, a, there's some argument in the chat. Uh, I knew DJ would be one to argue this, uh, being the <laughs> command line guy. He doesn't want to use an IDE uh, to to get that information. Of course, then I fall back to my argument of context tells you uh, tells you the usage. Uh, um, most of the time anyway uh, but uh, but yeah i see some others also arguing that uh, you shouldn't have to use the ide although i point out i, I mean I, I like command lines and shortcuts as well but i also like ides and to me this is a this is a heck of a nice feature of the ide how much information it provides you at at your fingertips yep yeah. But my argument is, is you still had to click something, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, well, other so than I'm what I can get from the outline. Just, just glancing at it. All right. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, Uva brings up a very good argument, one that I was going to, uh, to talk about here in a second, code completion. Now, this is another IDE one, but when you're doing code completion and – and you, you're using the prefixing, you're kind of losing something there. Because if I come here and, and where I've used the, the name, the, the object name as my main starting, flight, flights, and flights American, where uh, every, uh, my, my different variants of, of that, uh, the way that I can work with that data all start the same, when I do the code completion, when I, I do that, I see all of the different options. So I see the structure, I see the internal table, and then I see the, uh, the more specific filtered internal table uh, via my completion. But of course, if I am using Hungarian notation, then I have to already make that decision to see the list of objects. I, I can't see everything that has flight in the name. I have to already have narrowed it down uh, to know which scoped object that I that I want to use there, um, so it limits. I would make the case that Hungarian notation limits the usability of code completion uh, in the in the tooling as well. No argument. No argument there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Win that one. All right. <laughs> what, All am right. I, what am I going to say to that? Yeah. <laughs> So no, I mean that that's that's that 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 does mm. definitely okay it's powerful to to be able to do that. So so DJ makes the argument that code completion is is a good thing, but we should optimize our code for reading, not writing. Uh, so he's making the case that changing the naming to optimize for code completion. I, I would say it's not that we're optimizing for code completion. I would still make the case that my flights flight and flights American is is an optimized name. It just so happens the side effect of optimizing the name in that way also benefits the code completion. I, I would not say that uh, we should do it specifically for, for the code completion, but that's a side effect benefit. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna make, uh, I'm gonna make uh, one last argument here, and then I'll let you show your example. Um, And what did I do? Uh, why is that? Uh, it must be uh, as value. Value. Yeah. Oh, uh, what did I do? Value parentheses, I think. Oh, is it? Yeah. So I've changed the interface. Changed from an exporting to a returning. Didn't change the variable name. But to me, this is the biggest problem with Hungarian notation is it gets out of sync. So maybe I even – oh, no, I don't want that. What am I doing? So I've corrected my code, but now the whole thing about that is kind of 
kind of wacky now. Uh, well, and I kind of maybe that's not my best example there. And maybe I would want to, uh, uh, you know, I, I mean, any of these. I, I could change a method from from public uh, to private. Uh, I could take uh, oh, I could take uh, the the global flights variable and make it uh, make it local. If you don't then rename the variables, then the whole Hungarian notation is now misleading you. And I think this is the biggest, um, oh. the biggest yeah. drawback is I do dual maintenance. I have to both declare the type, but then I have to change the name and all the, and of course there's, you know, yes, there's some nice refactoring here where I could, uh, um, I do, uh, do, uh, do a quick fix or, um, on it and uh, and rename it, but I'm I'm dual maintaining the types then, and it's just asking for them to get out of sync with with what the type actually is. And, and to me, I left the my uh, what I felt was my strongest argument for last, which was that um, too often when people are maintaining code, that uh, that the Hungarian notation actually is wrong. I mean, it gets out of gets out of sync over time. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, I get it. I get what you're saying, but it comes down to it. It's the responsibility of the developer developers, um, people that are going to maintain it over time to to conform to what's been done and make sure that it's correct. I mean, I get what you're saying, but. You know, yeah. I don't really have a, <laughs> I don't I don't really have a stronger <laughs> argument for that, but uh, it's just extra maintenance at, at yeah. that point, right? Uh, I mean, it's maybe but not so bad, bad when you're first writing an application, application but when you're maintaining it over time and you go to refactor something, and it means that you have to change the name of all the variables because you've refactored the scope of a method or, or something like that. Um, it's just extra work that I think most people forget to do, and, and then. It's a negative to have that on there because it's actually incorrect information. Right. And no compiler or, or anything like that is going to catch that or warn you of that. Yeah, I could see how that'd be a problem. But then the next guy would come, around, come, come along and see that that's a problem and he'd fix it, right? <laughs> okay, all right. So before I, before I turn it over to you to show your, your example... Um, I'm going to make one last statement here. I think my, you know, the case that I've made against Hungarian notation also needs to go hand in hand with other clean code standards, uh, mainly being small methods that do one thing. And I think when you when you combine that, uh, when you combine those those uh, multiple approaches, then you uh, when you, when you combine those multiple approaches, you the the whole argument about context and and things like that make a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't. Yep. I think that's an important and an important aspect of it as well. But but maybe I'm setting you up because. Uh, because now, um, now you're going to show your example. Okay. All right. So let me. Let me stop sharing. And you can go ahead and share. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. All right. So. In order to get a good example, um, I had to go back to my BBC days. Um, so I pulled this uh, from something that I did, I don't know how many years ago, probably close to, oh wow, maybe eight or nine years ago. And this is a real world scenario, right? So this is something that we had to, we had to, we had to write to do something in a productive environment. And here I am eight or nine years ago, maintaining it right let's just say that for example okay so 
because I don't remember what this thing does, you know, having the Hungarian notation helps me try to figure this stuff out because I don't remember any of this stuff. But looking at the code and seeing those identifiers in the front of them helps me understand what's going on when I read through the logic, right? Um, so without getting too too into the logic because be, I'll be perfectly honest with the audience here. I don't know what this thing do, is doing anymore and I'm not sure why there's a, a loop with five loops embedded in it. Um, but at the time I probably had to do it for a reason, but um, let's not let's not dwell on that stuff. Uh, let's look more at, at, at how, how I name the variables and things like that. And this was, and I'll be honest with you, that also in the, in the BPC development team, um, we actually had standards so that we all named our our variables and our classes the same. So things like um, dr and dt, um, that was that was kind of uh, handed down um, um, from the development team. So things like uh, internal tables uh, in classes, we we prefix with dt, right? Our data references with dr, right? Um, our methods importing and exporting i um, for importing. Um, returning reference RR, right? Um, let's see here, CS for um, a returning or a changing structure, um, so on and so forth, right? But we're really, what I, why I, I like Hungarian notation is because I can go and I can look at a method and I can know exactly what, what it is when I'm looking at it, it's just by glancing at it, right? Um, so, Without even looking at the, you know, the data statements and, and things like that, um, I can know what it is. For example, when I'm passing to this create data data reference, I know that this is a table, right? Based on um, the LT, I'm passing the LT to the IT, right? I know that uh, I'm passing uh, something to this IF tech name, right? So. This is importing flag is what we used. Um, it's not interface, it's flag. And yes, there is a <laughs> importing, to be made. Importing flag. Now, how would I yes. know that F is a flag and not a floating point? Okay, so we didn't type <laughs> to that level, right? So we didn't... But flag, wasn't, but flag isn't even a data type. No, but it was. it's describing that it was... It's a... It's like an on or off or a yes or no or an X and a blank kind of a scenario is is was was what um, was what was decided. See, I think you're What's making that? my case for me here. Yeah, OK. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, so, yeah, so I can know I can know this stuff simply by glancing at it. Right. And that's the idea, especially when we start getting into realistic like, and you said that methods should be as small as possible when i have this generate expenses um method here so it starts at line 244 and goes to wait where are you oh, yeah. 244 and goes to 535 okay wow that's a big method yeah yeah it's a big method but that's reality we can sit here all day and say that methods should be small you get out there and you and we can do that in examples and um um, sample coding and things like that. But we get out there and we're we're taking customer requirements, right? Sometimes it doesn't happen where or makes sense that we can have one line of code in, in a method. I mean, it just doesn't work that way, right? So our, our, our methods could be quite big. And when we do that and we have 10, 12 different um, field symbols, definitions, uh, we want to know what they are. And yeah, and yes, I don't agree with naming field symbols um, FS. I don't, I don't believe in, in, <laughs> in it. Call, I mean, that's just redundant because you know what it is based on the the angle brackets, right? But yeah. I do think that we should still carry um, the Hungarian into our field symbols to to tell us whether or not it's a structure, uh, whether it's a, a, a standard table, whether or not it's a hash table is what we've done here, right? So giving it more of a descriptive uh, at this level, I know exactly what it is so that when I'm doing this crazy dynamic stuff, which this method is doing, um, you you have some idea of what you're looking at because of the nature of the dynamic 
coding itself, which is what we found when we were in, when we were doing VPC because of because of the the dimensions or the um, the cubes weren't didn't have a set structure. It could have been different on any system. All of our code had to be dynamic, and 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 these structures and internal tables had to be built. But Hungarian, I for me kept me sane without you know you know having too much trouble here. So again, <laughs> and let's not look at this loop. Just let's just scroll right past it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I, I love I love the comment. Uh, <laughs> this code hurts my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it it yes, it, and yes. Uh, I have it. There's actually a, a what we call a work status uh, module in GPC that I wrote that is even messier. Um, the first shipment of that, it worked, but man, was that messy. Um, but it was even worse than this. I think it was uh, probably ten or twelve embedded loops or something like that with all kinds of dynamic stuff going on in the in the center of it. It was it was nasty, but yeah. Um, Again, my argument is the length of the methods you can't control sometimes, and especially when using you know dynamic uh, programming, and you need to be able to glance at this stuff and know what it is uh, without having to read a whole lot of context because you're going back and you have, in doing that you'd have to go back and forth. I think the Hungarian notation in this case helps the developer. In my case, it it helps me, right? So that's my argument. Yeah, uh, there's a good point in the in the in the chat. Why did you have to mark your field symbols as local? Since field symbols, by definition, have to be local anyway. There's no such thing as a okay. So, so, so for your listeners, so that they understand, uh, Rich Heilman. I know Tom does. <laughs> um, I have a little bit of what what we call OCD. Um, so things have to be the same, um, even though they're different um so it's just uh, it's it's just bringing that habit all the way through without 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 an exception so don't read into too much into it right yes i could we could uh, we could just omit the the local but um for the l but you know for me it, it keeps me saying to everything is is labeled the same right whether it's a, a G, an L, whether it's a field symbol or a data, uh, data declaration, whatever. Um, it all uses the same notation. Hmm. Hmm. All right. So have we come to any conclusion here other than we disagree? No, I think we're just going to have, we're going to have lovers and haters and, and this will be a topic that we discuss and waste time on for years <laughs> to come. <laughs> no, I, uh, seriously, though, I mean, there's arguments for both ways. When it comes down to it, it's going to be style preference. Um, it's going to be what the developer is comfortable with, what the, what the developer needs for himself to be a productive developer. Um, Keeping in mind that somebody at some point probably has to maintain it. Um, I think that if using Hungarian notation is written properly, I think that I think that it's not a bad a bad way to go. Now, on the flip side of that, not not using Hungarian notation, I'll be honest with you, I haven't used it all that much, even though. Mr. Thomas Young has been trying to force me to do so for several months now because every time he looks at my code, he gives me crap about the Hungarian notation. Um, I haven't tried to write anything um, using, you know, your examples like flights and flight, you know. Um, maybe if I tried it and got used to it, maybe I would feel differently. But I think that's where we're at right now is that Maybe people don't want to. Maybe people don't want to change. I mean, that's that's human nature, right? Yeah. Um, maybe they don't see the value in in changing um, if it's not helping in uh, uh, in performance or or things like that. Um, that could be the situation as well. But. Yeah, I mean, I think consistency um, is important. 
uh, readability is important, and I, I think where we uh, are disagreeing here is on what what provides those those things. Um, right. Yeah. Um, I ha I really hate to see uh, a single class where it's mixed in parts of it. Uh, there's Hungarian notation and parts there's not, and oh, that uh, that's like nails on a chalkboard uh, to me. But right. Uh, I mean that that. You know, again, that that's consistency, and if you choose one or the other, you have to be consistent, right? Yeah, yeah. I like some of the examples that people are giving. So, you use an S uh, in a, t a table type Hungarian notation. Does that mean standard or sorted? Um, and it's just so many different interpretations of what those little beginning characters could mean. Um, yeah, yeah. All right. So, do you think we've beaten this to to death enough? I think we've had a good discussion and we've uh, we've done what we came here to do, but I don't think we have a resolution or or anything like that. Yeah, but, uh, I I see the, uh, I know, see points for and against the chat. I, I haven't seen anybody uh, uh, pick up their pitchfork and and torch and uh, <laughs> definitely storm the castle one way or another. But uh, uh, but yeah, I think a lot of people bring up good points. I'm I'm not going to go back to using Hungarian notation personally. I, I found that I've made the mental switch away from it, and it was it, it was tough at first. Just to just habit, right? Uh, when I was trying to code this the other day that was mixed with the two, I, I kind of had my force mentally back into uh, Hungarian notation, which was uh, which I did not find that easy. But I find once you've made the mental switch that reading the code is easier. But, but yeah, I think it's something that, uh, that does require some mental retraining when you're so used to, to seeing it. Mm -hmm. But I don't miss it. I, I don't. I feel now when I read code like LT flights, loop at LT flights into reference LR flights, I just feel like I'm my eyes are having to scan over stuff and discard it that that I don't need. Uh, that that just cleaner visually to to read without that. But but yeah, that that goes to the the mental part of this too, I guess. All right, so enough with Hungarian notation with the few minutes that we have left. Do we want to talk data references versus uh, uh, versus uh, field symbols? Another sure. Another nearly religious debate. Um, I'm not sure that, that I have a position on on whether on on either other than I like. The data reference, I think it's more elegant, but I think the main point here is the – maybe not the main point, but a point. Um, using field symbols or references is better than – either or is better than the alternative, right? Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure that I have a position, you know, field, field symbols versus data references um, other than elegance and – and, and and clean code in, in my my opinion, but uh, yeah. So give us some uh, give us some insight here. Yeah. So yeah. so we're talking about three different approaches when primarily when you're working with internal tables. Or there's other scenarios, but we'll, let's focus in on the internal table scenario. And, and what I've prepared is a typical scenario: loop at internal table, get each record at a time in some way that you can work with it, manipulate the data, and then put it back into the internal table. And, you know, the classic way to do this, well, I, I guess we could have went really far back and done, like, tables with header lines, but we won't, we won't dip that far into, uh, into historic stuff here. But, you know, there's the loop at into, where each record is copied uh, out of the internal table, uh, put into a separate variable work area structure, then you can manipulate the data. Then you have to perform a modify to bring the data back in. And, you know, most people years ago started shying away from this approach because of the idea of copying the data around. As it turns out, the ABOP compiler, if you're not actually changing the data, this is not that inefficient because behind the scenes it will it will do a, a, a lazy copy anyway 
which means that it doesn't actually physically the co copy the data into another memory area until you make a change to it. Um, so if this was a read-only loop, the performance on this actually wouldn't be that much different than a field symbol or a, uh, a data reference. But the whole point is, is that if you modify the, the data, if you change the data, then you have to have another command to move it back into the internal table. It just seems uh, potentially error prone if you if you forget the modify. Um, uh, whereas the other two approaches with field symbols and data references, because you are using a logically, you're using sort of a pointer to to go directly into the internal table without moving data somewhere else. Um, it just um, eliminates that extra step and does then have a performance benefit because the data is not being physically copied. So I think for most people, I think it's safe to say is that the debate these days primarily comes down to these two options, which is field symbols versus data references. And if you look at them, they're largely the same and logically they're basically doing the same thing. I want to get access to a record within a larger internal table without having to move anything out or and i want to be able to change data directly into that internal table record and syntactically they both work essentially the same uh, instead of assigning field symbol you've got reference into data i think the major difference here is here field symbols must have the brackets around them uh, and that maybe gets us back into a slight Hungarian notation-like debate. I mean, does that cloud up the uh, uh, the reading of this because you always have to type the uh, the extra greater than less than sign around my variable because it is a field symbol enforced by the enforced by the language in this case, not just uh, not just for naming purposes, but on the other hand, when you're accessing a data reference then you have to uh, reference the fields within that structure like you would an attribute of an object because really it's it's a very OO approach to to data access you're, you're basically treating that structure as a, an object as a data object and all of its fields are then um, are then essentially attributes of, of that object um, so that's that's the major difference syntactically. I look at this and I I prefer the data references a because I don't like the brackets around the variables being forced to put the brackets around the variables, and I like the consistency of the readability of actually accessing attributes of a structure the same way, or columns of a structure, the same way I access the attributes of, of an object. And, and mentally keeping my data as objects just like I would my, my classes. So I see that as a, as a positive to, to this approach. Any, any thoughts? Yeah, it's definitely, definitely more elegant. Um, agreed on all points there. I like that, um, it's an OO type approach and, and everything kind of looks the same. Yeah. Yeah. The major debate that I tend, uh, is I did some research online, what people were, were talking about, even in the clean code sample, uh, the clean code repository, people made the debate that field symbol is faster. And it is actually so let's do a little test to demonstrate this so what, what i have here is i have three different methods um i'm preloading a, a size a decent amount of data and we can manipulate the amount of data here to see what what effect that it has on these operations um but let's just run a um let's just run a profile on this And we're only going to look at the procedural units. So we can just look at the time that each unit takes, regardless of the of the SQL. All right. Now let's go look at that trace. And we'll look at the aggregated call tree. And this is nice, because now we can see the breakdown of time by, by each of these. So what you see here is, yes, the field symbol is faster than the data reference. 
And, you know, there's some, there's some internal workings, evidently, in the ABAP kernel, why that is, and, and how things have to be um, dereferenced when they are accessed, when the, when the individual objects are accessed, where the field symbol has a little less overhead, evidently. Um, but I think what you are seeing here is, and, and I'll crank up the data volume here. Yes, it's faster, but we're talking... This is this is not this is not milliseconds. This is this is microseconds. Okay, we're talking about an extremely small difference in in performance, right? Um, let's actually go back here and let's crank up the data a little bit. When we did this the other day, how much was too much? There, there was a point where I just overwhelmed the server, wasn't there? I think a hundred. Yeah, I, 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 think I, think a, I think a thousand I think a thousand was, was okay. I, I don't know. I think that. I think a hundred broke it. Did it? Oh, now we're yeah. gonna try a thousand. We're gonna, we're gonna be. I think a hundred. Oh I think a hundred thousand broke it. All right. Good luck. All right. So let's profile that again. For everybody yeah. that's on the trial system right now, <laughs> we um, apologize. He's about to bring it down. No, no. That that that, that <laughs> ran fast. That ran fast. Okay. So now what we see. You're starting to see the gap widen a little bit here, but I think proportionally they're they're still pretty close. I think there's um, uh, what was the uh, the percentages? You know, it's it's like what works out to about a one percent uh, difference in performance, and even increasing the loop tremendously here. I mean, we're talking about you know, what, uh, four milliseconds versus five milliseconds. And even the uh, the data reference, where we're having to write back and we're having to do memory copies and, and, and do that, you know, thousands of times, even that isn't that much more expensive. Um, so I think coming back to the argument here, I think this is one where I'm safe in saying even though that I know in my heart that data references are slightly slower than field symbols, I feel no guilt and continuing to use data references as opposed to field symbols for the consistency uh, alone. Um, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, I, I probably agree with that up until the point to where my program is so bogged down and I have no other recourse to improve the performance i've already done everything i could possibly do and i need to squeeze every single microsecond <laughs> out of my program then i could probably fall back to field symbols but um yeah i, I mean, don't think that's like i mean and that was kind of the recommendation in the uh in the clean code guidelines they ultimately the debate it, it went on there you know there was some debate over the performance difference and they were like it's not enough to change the recommendation of the clean code guidelines. But, you know, ultimately, if you find that very rare occasion where you have an extreme algorithm that is being done in a loop so many times that it starts to have an effect, then yeah, go ahead and use a field symbol. But, uh, but otherwise, the recommendation is still data references. Um, so I was just checking the chat real quick here, too, to see. Uh, doesn't seem to be a whole lot of debate on this topic a field symbol will only be created once i'm not sure I'm sure that references data will not create many reference variables in the stack no the the reference variable should uh uh should should be reused we don't see an increase in the uh in the memory usage here uh, either when when we do this within a within a loop yeah, and the the issue one one five in the official SAP style guide was the discussion that I was referring to. I went through through there, and, and made my own attempt at recreating some of the tests that people were doing, and 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 basically found the same baseline percentages and impact that that, that this has. Um, now, the one exception that we should uh, we should keep in mind here is there is still some functionality that only a field symbol can do when you are working with dynamic assignment. So like in this case where I am, um, I want to assign a component and where you're 
perhaps dynamically determine, and this is a little fake because I'm doing it three times and, and basically pulling the first three components out of the structure. I mean, the, the, I mean, it, it, I think it demonstrates the concept here. But when you are using this assign component syntax, you have no choice uh, but to uh, but to use a field symbol in this case. Uh, but in in this instance, you know, where they're using field symbols all throughout here, it, it's still pop possible to use data references up to a point. You can see here we're looping at the table. Uh, into still a data reference and then we can still do a sign component of a structure and just uh, you just have to dereference it with the uh, with the asterisk there uh, in order to do the assign component dynamically on the, the data reference structure but you still ultimately have to put it into a field symbol this is the this is the main exception restriction that I know of in in ABOP that forces you back into into field symbols. So there is still some, uh, there's still. Yeah, I mean, uh, we can always send this over to our uh, friends in ABOP development and see if we can have that assigned component statement modified, right? I can hear you. That's that's very weird. Uh, I'm sorry if I if I dropped out there. <laughs> they can see hear me talking. I was the most brilliant part of the entire live stream. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why uh, why my audio went uh, went down for a minute. Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not sure. Apologize. Uh, but basically, it was just uh, we were discussing the the assigned component uh, and how it was required in field symbol. And I don't know of another way to do dynamic sort of like RTTI, RTTS. But using the assigned component, I I, I know of no way uh, or no al al close alternative that would avoid using the field symbols. Um, so. Any last thoughts? Uh, um, DJ says you're on mute. Oh yeah, the, the, I saw that in the chat. That's I know, correct. Oh, okay. When I when, evidently when I switched the scenes there with to bring our oh. video back, uh, it lost my my audio for some reason. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I think we had a fun debate. I I uh, I definitely appreciate uh, the the audience participation. It was a lot of fun having everybody jump in there. It's kind of what we wanted to do. We wanted to uh, to discuss something today that would get uh, would get everybody uh, would get everybody involved. Um, so uh, appreciate that. Um, hope everybody enjoyed the the debate today. Uh, sorry for a few of the technical difficulties as we're still trying to figure out particularly with guests and and, and adding in another another window and sharing multiple desktops it's, it gets uh, we're, we're on the deep end of the pool as far as my experience with live streaming but uh, but I think we we struggled through it and and I hope in the end um, everybody enjoyed the enjoyed the debate and learned a little bit from it so uh, with that, thanks everybody for joining. Thanks, Rich, particularly for taking an hour out and, and joining us on the show. I'm sure you'll be back for many future episodes. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. I'll be back. Yeah, it was great having you on. And uh, uh, stay healthy, everybody. Uh, stay, uh, stay connected, and uh, we'll see you again next week for another episode of the Abop Freak Show.